All right, welcome back to Bioshock Infinite. We have to go find the final tear, correct? Yes. So it says I have a Vox code. I'm not sure where that goes. Somewhere, I think. So, I think I read somewhere, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I read somewhere that the person who does the voice acting for the motorized Patriot is the same person who does the voice acting for the medic from Team Fortress 2, Robert Acton Downs. I think that's how you pronounce it. Which is kind of funny, because, you know, they're like two completely different roles and are also the reason why I love voice actors. Because one role, you have this super serious, you know, robot with a Gatling gun looking to tear out Columbia from the ground. Or from the sky, I guess. And then his other role is a crazed, unhinged German doctor who is very comedic in the game. And it's just, you know, it's co two completely different roles and it's very much the reason why voice acting is so fun it's because you never suspect there, there are times where you just never suspect that there are two the same person that they're the same person doing these two completely different roles i need some english skills all right where are we going where are we going i always get lost in this place Oh, we're going back to the Comstock gate, okay. That's where the final tear is. I've played this before. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Do we see this? Yeah, we have. Have we been in here, though? Kind of, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, it's just... I don't know, fun to see voice actors take on so many different roles. Especially, it's especially shocking when you just, you know, don't expect them to be on the complete opposite of the spectrum compared to one of the roles they've done. Where are we going? How am I lost? Why am I lost? Man. I always get lost in here. Okay. Hello, is that a random person there? Well, it is. Okay, I thought she was gonna throw me that health kit. Apparently I was too far away. And you know, I I promise I don't die this much when I'm playing this. I'm just gonna blame the fact that I'm recording and diverting my attention between two different things. That is my excuse. It's not a good one, but it's an excuse. Alright, where is everyone? Come here. here go. Thank you. Try to keep you Who's left? Ow. Another thing I kind of want to talk about is, um... This game came out, I think, in 2013? Sorry, 2013 or 2014. And because it's kind of old, um, its merchandise is also very much quite expensive. Um, I mean, there are some, you know, rare things, and I guess it makes sense, because, you know, most of these things that are expensive are like rare pieces of merchandise like a limited time uh, blimp that came with like the PlayStation 3 version, I think. It was like a miniature blimp that you can pop up. 
And um, now we're going in here. And yeah, it was just, I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's... I guess it's kind of selfish to say that, you know, you want it, and it's... And you're sitting there complaining that you can't have it because it's so expensive, but... I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking again. Since I'm kind of like Infinite's biggest fanboy, I guess it would make sense for one for me to want to acquire certain pieces of merchandise, but at the same time, since they're so expensive, I guess it's a little it's it's a little I don't know what the word would be. It's not it's, I I don't know. It's like you know, I kind of want the merchandise, but at the same time, I, I assume it would be, you know, greedy to just try and get everything, especially something that's limited time that someone else has, and, you know, I don't know, I'm overthinking things again, but, yeah, that's, some infinite merch is pretty expensive, though. Like that blimp was like five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars, I forget. I don't know my money. I'll be down here. Alright, so we gotta head back to Comstock Gate. So we can deliver the final blow to Lady Comstock. The founders will bleed. I thought I saw someone there. But yeah, also there's an Elizabeth, like, little statue. A little statue of Elizabeth that I think is, like, a thousand dollars. I could be wrong about that, but it was pretty expensive the last time I, I saw it. But yeah, like I said, it's kind of greedy to just wants all the merchandise and it's probably an it's very much an unrealistic expectation expectation apparently English is not my first language despite being brought up with English um, can't find anything I want right now electricity probably went the wrong way of course, I chose the most time-wasting route when we're already eight minutes in. Oh boy. Oh, I can't jump through there. Ow. Like, the main thing... And anyone who knew the truth was better dead than alive. No, you are not. Elizabeth, listen to me. What you've been through, ain't nobody in the world deserves that. Okay. We are getting out of here, you got it? You're never gonna have to look back. I think the main thing... Oh, hey, more money. <laughs> yeah, 
just sounded all cheery while she was having a... What? He was like, hey, more money. Like, yeah, ignore the fact that everything else is going on. I think the main piece of merchandise I want, though, is just the stuff from the Ultimate Songbird Edition. Which is like a little tiny songbird figurine. Which, there's two versions. One of them, which is signed by... I think his name is Kevin, or Ken, um, which is like the, I think one of the lead directors of this game. And then there's an unsigned version, which is a lot less expensive, obviously. And then I think there's a little handyman figurine that comes with it, as well as the digital soundtrack. I don't know. But yeah, that sounds pretty nice to have. Like I said, it's... Probably a bit greedy and not realistic to try and get those. Alright, now we can go to the Comstock house. I'm not sure what that box code was for. I have no idea. Also, why do you always crouch when you get here? Or What? Alright. Anyway. Yeah, see, now it's gone. I don't know. I don't know, man. Things are weird. Some weird happenings here. Let's go chase down Songbird.
Oh, you know how global warming is. So yeah, we just went through a tear, I believe. And now... And now we're here. Yeah, this is where the game gets a little weird. But it's all for... For a purpose. If not to be a little creepy, but hey. You know, it's not a Bioshock game unless one thing is creepy. Like this guy. Look at him. Look at that nose. Look at that snoot. No sin evades his gaze. So this is the boy of silence. Or I guess the boys of silence. I don't know. I think he's the boy of silence and these are the boys of silence. Oh, I didn't know you were bleeding from your ear. Hold on. I didn't know they bled from their ears. That's odd. Anyway, so basically, you have to stealth around those guys. You can see their light there. In this fight, you can't, so... Hello. How's it going? And now these guys are all jittery. That was an explosion and a half. So yeah, you basically just need to avoid their light and um, stealth your way through. Be, be stealthy. Um, is there any weapon I want? No? Okay. There is a way to skip this entire section. Basically, you stand like right about here-ish. You equip your charge, and then you jump up and you charge to that turret up there. And that will basically just skip this entire section. And then you can go activate the elevator and um, come back down. And that basically just skips the entire asylum. Right. Listen, I just want to see the girl. Who were those? Doesn't matter. I just gotta get to the warden's office. It's too late for that now, child. Your father gave you a lovely home, and you chose to destroy it. He's not my father. I suppose the siphon is a kind of leash. Yes, my father put it on me. But when the time came, neither did I remove it myself. What would happen if I took off the leash, and I found I was... As obedient as ever. All right, the atrium. So let's not get caught here, because I don't have much ammo. All right, cool. We are Booker DeWitt, master of stealth. Let's watch the sunrise. William R. Foreman, 1909, number 68. Man, there's a beautiful sunrise in that grayscale. Yep. That's a good sunrise. Alrighty. Hello, Carbine. I'm gonna take you. 
I'm just gonna take you. Okay, almost got caught. Alright, where we lie? I'm glad this is right next to this room. <laughs> like, it's not on a different floor or anything, it's just right next to a room where people would walk through. Our minds are born, festering with sin. Some are so blighted, they will never find redemption. The mind must be pulled up from the roots. My children are without blame, without fault, and without choice. For what is the value of will when the spirit is found wanting? Alright, where we cleanse? Hello, weird wheelchair. Haha, -ha, I'm blocking your path. You have been. Oh. Ah, uh, well, see, that's not fair. If you can just teleport, good gosh! All right. I'm Dr. Pettifog, Elizabeth, and I'll be taking care of you. Get away from me! Defiant, even after all this time. Dewitt just left you here. You need to give up on him, love. He will come. Yeah, I didn't know that the wheelchair would teleport if you blocked his path. Kind of like in Half-Life 2, if you block an NPC's path, they'll just teleport. It's actually used in speedruns to speed some sections up. Where are you? Oh, come on. Were you invisible? Wait. What? What's happening? This isn't supposed to happen. He was invisible. He blew up. And none of them are alerted. Alright, now some weird things are really going on. What happened? Was he just not loaded in, right? The specimen needs to be destroyed. We couldn't even hold her in that tower. And now the prophet destroyed the lamb? His hair? If we modify the procedure, we could it would be safer for everyone. It would seem an accident. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. There was supposed to be a guy right there. And obviously he got alerted and exploded. But, um, no one really seems to care. So I don't know. Anyway, I guess we'll just continue on. This carbine is in need of an upgrade. Hello. Okay, well. Whoops. Finally. After a billion years, he died. You'll need to eat 
sooner or later. And if you hold out for DeWitt, you'll just starve to death. Come now. All right, let's go upstairs. And what did the Lord receive in return for his gift? Eve and her apple, Sodom and Gomorrah. So yeah, if you were down there and you did that skip, then you would uh, you would be all the way up here, and you wouldn't have gone through all that stuff with the boys, the boys of silence. Me and the boys of silence just hanging out. Hey, now you just disappeared. That's not fair. Hummingbirds. William R. Foreman, 1909, number 77. Those are the hummingbirds from the beginning of the game. Look at that. I actually saw a hummingbird not too long ago in real life. They're quick little creatures. It was kind of weird because its body, when it flew, Yeah, I actually saw a hummingbird, and it was weird because it flew by, and its body, like, I don't know, undulated a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Alright. We got one more boy of silence to deal with. This time he's actually here. Gotta be stealthy. Stealth. New pants. I'll just keep the ones that I have. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. But in the end, he is the one who'll have to pay down all of our accounts, won't he? Where does his guilt start? And mine end. There's nothing over here. Where we learn. A man once me Hello, you weird propaganda. But in the end, he abandoned me to serve his own needs. But in some ways, I thank him. He showed me exactly how much faith God put his face in men once too. It seems that we have something in common. Disappointment. Battleship Falls, William R. Foreman, 1909, number 99. Get a beautiful shot of of Battleship Bay and Whoops. William R. Foreman, October 13th, 1870, 67 to October or something. Yeah, he died. He died. It's kind of interesting because, you know, you would think that Someone would put like safety rails or something, but I don't know. Cause it's just like a running river into nothing. As the days pass, I 
believed less in God and more in Lutes. My powers shrivel as my regrets blossom. All of this because my father failed me. By the time I realized how far I'd gone, it was too late to stop it. But there is still one last chance at redemption for both of us. Where's the switch? What I've done cannot be undone. I cannot stop what I have put in motion. Hello. I can't ruin that jump scare with those devil's kiss traps. Oops. Hello. Goodbye. Where are you? I'll get a hold of you, but you won't get a hold of me. Where's the other guy? I don't know. Hello. Asylum. They don't even listen to me anymore. All I can do is watch as what I set into motion slides into its terminal stage. It took all I had left in me just to bring you here. Uh, Elizabeth, I, I don't understand. I, I heard you screaming. I was, I was coming to get you. Are we... Here, take my hand. The seed of the prophet shall sit the throne and drown in flame the mountains of man. Say what you will about Comstock. Was a hell of a fortune teller. Wasn't the torture that broke me. Wasn't the indoctrination. It was time. Time rots everything, Booker. Even hope. I was coming. Songbird. He always stops you. Yes, but I would find a way. No. It's too late for I brought you here for your sake, yours and hers. Here. What is it? 
is this? It's for her. She'll know how to read it. What does it say? It's advice. Advice on what? How not to become me. Before she... There's still time. Alright, well, I'm gonna leave that off for the next episode. So she's gonna have to wait just a few more minutes. So yeah, the uh, asylum part was kind of like the last bulk of the game. Um, so now we're on our way to the final part of this game. Not like the final part of the series, though. Imagine there's like one or two more parts to this. And then we still have DLC stuff to do. So, yeah. Next time we will go and we will save Elizabeth. So, Elizabeth is nearby. Find her. Well, I don't think that's going to be hard to do. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.